my my tea is PG tips, and I Perfect. don't drink I don't drink it every day. But when I do, it's usually late afternoon, and so I drink it from my chipped Laurence Olivier cup from the National Theatre. Congratulations so much on your nomination for Hollywood for Ellen Kincaid. It was one of the most beautiful shows I've seen this year. And as someone who hasn't been able to experience Los Angeles and Hollywood very much because of these quarantines, it reminded me why I moved here in the first place. So I just wanted to ask you, um, what about this role drew you to Hollywood and to Netflix and so on? I would love to hear about your experience. Well, I, I would love to. Uh, to do a period piece that takes place in the 40s in Hollywood, about Hollywood, is about as an attractive proposition as you can imagine. I was born in that period. Of course, I don't remember it. And it wasn't my period as an adult, but I feel like it should have been. I feel like I should have been an adult having a career in the 40s in Hollywood. It feels just right for me. So that part was great. But in this case, Ryan Murphy said he was actually really writing that, this part with me in mind. And people say that, you're not always sure it's really true, but in the case of Ryan, I was, uh, <clears throat> I was very uh, believing. And uh, he also said she had moxie. And that word appealed to me, a spirited woman who uh, has a lot of confidence and who has charm because moxie implies that you might have power, you might have force, you might make things happen, but that you're going to make it easy on, on the viewer. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, throughout your career, uh, were there any people that stand out to you as having supported you, pulled you up, raised you up, and, you know, helped you find your voice in your career? I think I, I had a few friends who were champions of me. I had an agent very early on who said, you're not going to really work heavily and steadily until you're an old lady. <laughs> oh, my yeah. goodness. <laughs> and I said, geez, Bob, I mean, Come on, but actually I have worked pretty steadily, but I have gotten uh, a lot of really wonderful and very, very important roles late in my career. And I think it's partly because early on, I was never an ingenue. So when I was actually young, I couldn't play what would be the typical young part in a, in a play or a movie because I wasn't ingenue in type. I was always, uh, I guess for lack of a better word, a character actress or a leading lady. In, in feeling, so I couldn't play roles until I grew into them. And, and then when I really grew into them, I started getting cast in younger parts, which is, so, I mean, I'm, I'm way up there and I play sometimes younger than I actually am now. But uh, I guess the most encouraging person I had was my teacher who was Stella Adler. And she, uh, I mean, she would really, drive home to me that my own estimation of myself was not high enough. And uh, it was, she was wonderful to me. She, she had a lot of belief in my ability and my talent and in my, my, my head. And she was very encouraging. Um, speaking of having a long career and finding your most important roles later along in your career, um, what did you feel like was your breakthrough career moment where you were like, oh my goodness. Well, Something is I, changing. I, I really, no, I really have had a number of them. I mean, I was exclusively in New York in the theater until I was in my mid-30s. The first time I came out to L.A. and I happened to get a very important job. That first job was uh, Prison Buddies, which I co-started with Tom Hanks, who one recognized immediately was going to be the most enormous star. And um, that was a wonderful, wonderful, light, delicious comedy. Um, and so that was a breakthrough. But then, I mean, the practice some, some uh, 20 years later was a, an equally big jump in the kind of parts I was considered for, uh, thanks to David Kelly, who I've just worked with again recently in a show called Mr. Mercedes. I don't know whether that came to, to Britain. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I think the most important defining job of my career was when I was 70 years old, when I did Anne on Broadway. But, Governor Richards, and that was uh, 
has been described as a tour de force performance. It was a solo play. And it was a, a, a massive undertaking that actually just so transcends anything professional or the theater. And it just was a life defining, a life defining moment. So that was, that was an enormous breakthrough. But I've, had, I've lived long enough to have about 10 wonderful, wonderful breakthroughs in my career. And I haven't stopped yet. 